This is our solar array. We've had it for 14 days. It's already covered in bird poo and tree pollen, annoyingly. Anyway, it's been fantastic so far. We've got 30 solar panels, I had to remember then. We've got 30 solar panels. It's 13.5 kilowatt array, and we've got two batteries down there and two inverters, they're linked up in parallel. So it's been absolutely fantastic actually generating some power and using cheap electricity with the batteries. It's been so good. It's one of those things I just wish that, I wish we had done it sooner. Not that we were really in a position to do it sooner. It's a big chunk of cash, but still it's, yeah, it's fantastic to actually generate some power yourself on your own roof and be less reliant on importing energy from the grid. So it's been great, but not perfect we have had some problems. I'm currently sat on my drive on a crate with a new inverter sat on it. So yes, there have been issues and hopefully this is gonna fix it. So on the side of the house, you'll see that we've got two alpha ESS inverters and two batteries. Now these are connected up in parallel which means they're linked together. Each one of these inverters is a five kilowatt inverter. If you link them in parallel, that means you've got a 10 kilowatt inverter. So this is the Alpha app that I look at religiously. At the moment, you can see that we're only generating 1.36 kilowatts of solar power, which isn't great, really. But, uh, you know, it's a very cloudy day. Um, so this is great looking at this. However, I noticed something. This is the 17th of April, and you can see that the solar, which is the yellow graph there, uh, was doing really well. Um, it got up to, let's, if I just go, ooh, got up to about 6.3, 6.3 kilowatts. But then it dropped off a cliff. You see, it just dropped, and it was a perfect sunny day, so we should have had a nice curve, it should have gone like that really, and um, it should have been fine. And the issue it seems is because of one of the inverters. Up here I can change between all, which combines the output of both inverters, or I can click on one of those and the other one. And you can see quite clearly here that the green is the battery level, so it gets charged up it gets charged up during the night at the cheap rate, which is all good. And then it starts being used by the house. So the blue shows the house load. So as all the radiators come on, you see that spikes up in the morning. And as that spikes, of course, the battery gets used and the battery depletes. But what you can see quite clearly from here is the solar was doing really well up there, but then it just stops and it drops and it drops the moment the battery reaches 100%. Because as the solar is dealing with our house load and it's putting any excess, of course, into the battery, reaches 100% and then it drops. And that's a bit strange. And that's a consistent, that's been a consistent behavior. We've had a few sunny days to test it. Uh, you can see it's happened again there. It reaches, reaches 100% and then it drops. And here we go, on the 19th, you can see that's happened again. Lovely yellow solar spike up there, and then it drops. The, if I just go to the other inverter here, you can see this isn't, this isn't really doing the same, although the battery there does reach 100%, and it does look like it, yeah, it does spike there. I don't know whether you can see that, but the solar does kind of drop briefly. Um, so yeah, you can see that the solar does also drop there. And again, it was, a, it was a pretty good day, so that shouldn't happen. I was looking at the app thinking, well, that's a bit strange. And then I was frantically searching online to see about whether hazy days can affect solar production and all the rest of it. Um, clearly, while I was looking, Heatable were looking as well because Heatable called our installers. And then uh, Richard from the installers, he called me and he said that Lee was going to come over and look at it. Lee was the electrician that uh, did all of the battery and inverters, all this sort of stuff on this side of the house. That was his job. Um, 
So he started coming on over on the Friday, but he was stuck in traffic and there was an accident on the motorway. He couldn't make it over, so he came on Saturday instead. He tested everything. He tested the strings. They were, I believe, at the correct voltage and whatever else. I'm not an electrician. I don't understand a lot of this. He tested all the voltages and everything seemed to be fine with the panels and the setup and everything. They were also talking to Alpha. Um, meanwhile, and trying to get all this resolved, there was a possibility that it might be a software issue and all the rest of it, but in the end, they've decided that, no, it's probably an issue with the inverter. So all of this was happening in the background and it was all being sorted out while I was merrily checking the app. But despite us not having the maximum amount of solar generation that we would have expected, not that we really know what to expect actually, because it's a 13.5 kilowatt array, but actually we're never going to get 13.5 kilowatts. It just doesn't happen. Um, but the maximum we've had, I think, has been about 7 point something kilowatts, so less than I would have hoped, especially as we've had so many sunny days. So meanwhile, I went to Everything Electric, the show in London, and Heatable were there, and funnily enough, so were Alpha. So I spoke to Ben at Heatable, and he was on it like a rocket and um, calling the Heatable office, and they were they said no we know about it we know about the issue because i was obviously saying you know ben said how's it all going and i said well there's this problem heatable were sorting it out in the background there were already tickets logged with alpha ben and i then went round to the alpha stand talked to james at alpha and um and he was great and, and we we're all chatting about it one of the reasons that heatable love installing alpha is that you've got a uk based support center so when they need to talk to them they just ring up and there's always someone there and you're not dealing with call centers in other countries and all that sort of stuff and they really like that sort of hands-on support so really it's all been very good i mean it's annoying to get issues and ben at heatable is particularly annoyed because this just never happens on alpha systems he's found them to be very reliable um so yeah so it's a shame it's happened but you know they have been uh, pretty proactive really um, and quite on it with the support and Alpha seemed to be good as well from from what I understand from Heatable and talking to our installers because they've all been talking together and all been sending data back and forth and trying to work out what the problem is. So I think that describes the situation so far. So on the driveway we've got a replacement inverter that's just been delivered. Alpha delivered that just now. Uh, Lee, our installer, said he's going to be here in about an hour so he's then going to swap the inverter over for the new one and hopefully that's going to resolve the issues so lee's back and we're going to swap i say we're going i'm not doing i'm not doing anything uh, lee's going to swap out the uh, inverter which one is so so this is the host this is the follower yeah and it's the follower that's got the issue, isn't it? No, the host has the issue. Ah, so that's the... Okay. This is the one with the string not working. Ah, this is the one. So, okay. Okay, so the host gets swapped out. And, and then, as we've just seen on the app, the follower is the one that, when it gets to full on the battery, the solar's dropping out instead of exporting. Yeah. So we'll look into that as well. Okay. And when you came last time, what did you check? So I, was, I had a phone call off of Kian from Heatable, and he said that one of the strings wasn't working. Um, so I just come to check my voltages and I check them from the strings down into the isolator and then from the isolator into each um, inverter. So I've pulled out the, the DC plugs here, the MC4s, and tested them at the MC4s and I had all voltages on all of them. So it was just to prove that nothing was wrong with the panels coming down into the system. Um, but obviously since then it was still not reading one of the strings and you've then been to one of the conventions and they've told you that there's a faulty inverter. So that's yeah. what we're here today to do. Okay, great. Um, and just to, just to recap, each yep. is two strings in each inverter? So there's two strings in each inverter. They're equally um, segregated. So there's one string of nine and one string of six. And again, one string of nine and one string of six. just before I do this is that I'm just going to retest the strings as I did on that Saturday. Okay. Yeah. 
Which is what it should be. So that's the nine, that's the six. Okay. So strings are fine. Now, because I know nothing about electrics, would you always get the same voltage or does the voltage change throughout the day? So the voltage stays the same depending on how many panels. So the, the voltage only goes up if you add a panel. So a panel right. is, depending on the panel, they're usually rated between 45 and 50 volts. Okay. Bigger ones, it's 55. So that's when that goes up. And then what you do is you add them all up together to get your voltage of what it should be. And then you test it to prove that there's a bit of volt drop. Right, okay. So if I was to, I can't remember what these panels are, I think they're 47 volts. So you add up the nine and you get a value, then you do your volt drop and then you work out if the volt drops. Normally you never get more than 15 volts. Okay. And then if it's lower than that, then you've got a problem or the long, the runs too long and you need to up rate the cable or you have, if it fluctuates on there and it, bounces between lots of different voltages it means it's an open circuit okay so one of the, the mc4s on the panels is not plugged in properly right. or it could be breaking the cable somewhere right okay. that's how we test as long as you've got a, st a static figure right then the voltage will always it, i mean it does vary throughout the day but not as much as you'd see it like with the sunlight it usually stays the same the amps is what would fluctuate right i see Hi Andrew, uh, my name's Lee, I'm calling from Heatable. I'm at a property just wanting to recommission a parallel system with a new inverter. Okay. Oh, thanks, Willie. Do you want tickles? Give me a few minutes, you should, should air click into life in a minute. Yeah, I love it. Oh yeah, I can air click in now. So I think that's all sorted. Um, I've double checked all the strings before turning everything on. Uh, we've got all, all voltages correct. And then now the inverter is picking up the last string. The solar generation has gone up massively. Uh, and then we've been on the phone to Alpha and got it recommissioned. So at the moment, it's, they're both charging from the grid. Well, they're partly the solar, but also topping up on the grid. So I guess they're calibrating the batteries, right? Yeah, I believe they're still probably calibrating because when we was f turning them on and off, the follow was off for a while and the host was on longer. So this was probably charging off the strings, which then unbalanced them, which is annoying. But they will probably be calibrating them now. Um, and then, yeah, I think they are because that one's not charging and that one is. So they'll let that right. one get up to the same level as that and then they're both set in. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Lee. No worries. Now, being a little bit of a data freak, I was a little bit apprehensive that all the old data for the inverter that wasn't working, I thought all of that was going to get thrown away. But Alpha were able to just copy all of that data across to the new inverter. So it means that if I look back at historical data, it's all there. I've not lost anything. So that makes me very happy. So it turned out that the solar clipping issue was a known problem with Alpha systems connected in parallel and Heatable told me that they were working on a fix. So in the meantime, on the 29th of April, I finally got the export MPAN. That's the number that you need to actually get paid for anything you export to the grid. So that's something that Octopus applied for with UK Power Networks. Uh, UK Power Networks took 19 days to get that number back. I don't know whether it would have been even slower had I not chased them, but I did chase them as well. But once Octopus had that number, it then took a few more days to get going, but it's all good. We're now getting paid for the energy we're generating. On the 14th of May, Alpha pushed a firmware update to these, and magically I didn't have to do anything. And after that, I was able to export the full 10 kilowatts to the grid, which has happened actually quite a few times because the weather has been glorious recently. So, that actually means that on some days we've been paid for our energy generation. In fact, we've, we've paid nothing. We've had negative bills on some days. So just looking at the Octopus app quickly, you can see on the 20th of May, we spent £1.45, but we got £6.36 back. So that, given how much we've been spending recently on electricity, that is so wonderful to see. But I'm going to go into all of that in another episode because I'm actually still, I'm waiting for Octopus to give me a bill since all of this was done. So I don't actually know how much, I know roughly, but I don't know exactly how much 
we've paid or how much we've been paid just yet. So I'm going to save that for the next episode and I have chased octopus for that bill. Anyway, for now, I think that's the end of the video. If you've got any questions, then do let me know in the comments. If you would like an install with Heatable, or at least get a quote anyway, then use the links in the description and at the bottom of the screen. So mysteryv.co.uk slash solar or slash battery. Uh, the solar, you'll get 150 pounds off. Battery, you get 75 pounds off. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please press this subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back very soon. Bye for now.